right, here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Patty Kudair, local realtor with the Sutton Group Ottawa. And today I am joined by Trisha Roths, the Director of Special Events and Community Engagement. Let's talk about each one of those events, if you don't mind, just to shed some light and, you know, use this up. Photo op, if you will. Right, right. It's an opportunity to tell people what's coming down the pipe. Yeah. So Fight for the Cure is a really great event that many people in Ottawa know about. Uh, a thousand people in the room, uh, 12 fighters who fight in six different bouts. Um, they start training in March. Tryouts are in February. They start, they're selected and start training in March. So they train for eight months. And then they fight on fight night. They, each of them try to raise at least $40,000 through their fundraising. Um, the event sold out before it would even get an opportunity to be posted because it has such a wide network of people that want to be there. Um, Scott Whitaker and Matt Whitaker are the ones who, uh, it's their baby, work a lot alongside them to make that happen. And uh, each year there's a, a new round of business leaders who step in literally step into the ring yeah and they do three minute uh, three minute fights and yeah yeah it's a it's a great event first event that i went to for fight for the cure was in october 2022 so really like the first big event that post-covid and and people were out of the gates like they were so excited to be there so and i sat there and thought, I haven't been in a room with more than 20 people <laughs> in two or three years. Yeah, so. now we have almost a thousand. Exactly, exactly. And they're all watching a fight, people sweating. <laughs> exactly. But the energy is really electric. And all of the people who participate in Fight for the Cure have some sort of connection to cancer and have a true appreciation for what we do at the Cancer Foundation. And I go to the gym and watch them train sometimes and connect with them by email and help them with their fundraising. So I get to know them as the year goes on. And often when it comes to fight night, I have a hard time knowing who to cheer for. So yeah. And then sometimes I don't watch because I, well, that's the thing. It's like your two best friends are fighting, which one you, have, you can't pick a side. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So this year I'm really excited because there are two women fighting as well, which is something that hasn't happened, I think since 2019. So so yeah, it'll be exciting to have that. And people are always excited to have the female fight. So Yeah, I think I already picked my winner on that one. I'm not, I'm not going to release Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so out of those three, so look, look, again, we're still talking about the, uh, you know, the, the fight. Yeah. How often do you put on the fight? Is it once a year? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you, like, obviously you talked about the planning and like how many fighters and all of that. What's the goal? The end goal of the fight? Uh, the end goal is a million dollars. Yeah. So we raise about a million dollars every year. Um, and I think 2022 was the first year that we hit that million dollar mark. And so 2023 again. So that's the hope for this year as well is to raise a million dollars. And, you know, really at the end of the day, we're in a room with a thousand people. We are there to share our message about what we do. Um, so there is a fundraising, but the community engagement again. Yes. I mean, the Ottawa Cancer Foundation, it is definitely a nonprofit. So, you know, for folks that are out there, they can definitely get the financials online if they want to. Uh, and the I donation see. pages for each fighter are yeah. avail available through our website. Not only that, but I meant like the, the actual background, CRA financials. Oh, yes. Yeah. They're, they're out yeah. there. With that being said, well, like where do you find your shortfall as far as funds go? And, and how, how far off are we from the mark you want to be? With fight, with fight for the Cure? For everything, for all of it. Wow. Probably through donations, right? Like we really just need people to donate and to acknowledge that supportive cancer care is an important part, an essential part of the cancer care continuum. Well, you know, we have people who are living really long lives past cancer, um, but sometimes okay. those lives are a bit more complicated than they were before. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, people use the word chronic cancer because you're living with the effects of that for a lifetime. And again, not everybody experiences that, but those who do really need yeah. that support moving forward. And for folks that are watching, like I'm maybe speaking for myself or some of the family members, when it comes to cancer, it literally felt and it feels like, um, you know, maybe a, the comparison is not great, but I'm going to try it anyways. It's like literally been hit by a sharp nail and like, 
you're having to kind of worry about scar for the rest of your life regardless and most people don't see it because it's not like you carry it out there it's just something that's internal right and you're living with it and you're always sort of holding your breath waiting for the other shoe to drop if you will yeah. so definitely something that i behind and i i, I really commend you guys on all the on the works that you do so let's talk about the gala you know that that's gonna sounds like it's gonna be a fun night tell me a little it's bit gonna be amazing <laughs> yeah so on february 1st which is world cancer day we will be hosting our gala at the westin and yeah we're just in the process right now of working on sponsorship so if there's any sponsors out there who are really interested in helping us celebrate our 30th anniversary we are excited about that you know there will be some you know homage to what we've done before and the people who have been involved but it's a real opportunity to celebrate what we do right now and celebrate everybody that's been on that journey with us for so long. I have a golf tournament on Saturday and that the people organizing the golf tournament have been doing it for 25 years for us. Um, we had a golf tournament in the spring and they it was over 20 years. So there are people that have really been beside us through lots of transition in our model from research and clinical trial to the support of cancer care frontline service work that we do today. And so there'll be lots of celebrating those people um, and, and really talking to people about how things are going to be moving forward and how we're going to commit and continue to provide that program and service you know, area to people with the part of cancer care. So, and I hate to, I hate to completely hate the U.S. politics, but I'm going to compare it a little bit. <laughs> Would you... If we were to, you know, compare it for people out there, would you compare the gala to the State of the Union in a way? Just telling people about what you've done so far, what you're going to do next. Is that is that fair? Yeah, kind of. And I think that's a bit of what we do with our breakfast as well. But it's like, a, it's much more of a party. Like this, okay. will, yeah, this is going to be a really great time for people to celebrate. And, and again, the heaviness with the topic of cancer, um, there's lots to celebrate. Right. There are lots of people who have used our services who, you know, are in such a great place today. And people with stage four cancer who they know that there's not going to necessarily be a cure for them, but they're living their best possible life with cancer. Yeah. Right? That's the true definition of YOLO. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You yeah. only live once, might as well go and party it. Yeah. So with the gala, and as it happens once a year for folks that are watching. And the theme is partying, you know, make it <laughs> celebrating, less, yeah. celebrating, and make it as less heavy as as right. supposed to be. And with that being said, what are your goal as far as uh, sponsorship, as far as uh, you know, donation? What does that look like for you guys? Yeah, we're looking at raising about six hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. you're pulling all these numbers out of me because I was just working on this yesterday. <laughs> Amazing. Good enough time to better. There you go. Um, so six hundred and fifty thousand. How have you been doing that in the past? Was that so actually this thirtieth anniversary gala, first gala we've hosted in quite some time. So I think I don't think there's been a gala since twenty ten. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's not something that we normally do. It's something that we're integrating into our event schedule this year because you can't go thirty years and not celebrate that. Right. Right. There's a big thirty. So the gala is, where is it supposed to be? What's the, you know, tell me a little bit more about how can people get involved from a sponsor standpoint and then also from someone like myself just wants to. Right. You know, yeah. I, so ticket sales will be starting in November and have the sponsorship package ready for anybody who wants to reach out. We'll be reaching out to people who have sponsored us in the past and, you know, always want to give people who are really connected to us that first opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, but I are very open to new sponsors as well. So if you feel like that, you know, our brand it fits and connects with their brand, then obviously happy to, to work with them. And is there such a thing as like a little too small of a sponsorship or too big of a sponsorship? No, oh, no, really there. I mean, people can sponsor a table. And so, you know, that's a great way for a company to do that is to come in and sponsor a table. And so it doesn't have to be a big $25,000 or $30,000 sponsorship but, or even 15000 It could be that they just purchase the table as a sponsor. It's a great way for, for people to do that at a more reasonable, manageable level, depending on the size of their company. 
And where will it be, or have you decided on the venue so far? Yeah, it's at the West End. The West End. Yeah, which is also where we host Fight for the Cure. It's a great location, and it's also easy for a lot of people, you know, in and out of the city, all of that cool stuff. Uh, and then you can stay at the West End if you want. Yes. The chances are probably have a good deal going for, for the night. Well, we do often coordinate that with the West End. We need to block certain rooms and have a discounted rate. So we have a great partnership with them. So, yeah. What a great time to be celebrating something that's so ominous in a good way. In a way that we bring, you know, shed some light on it and like talk a little bit more about it, make it less sort of the elephant in the room kind of. You know, there's so much success to celebrate around the work that we do, but also the people who use our services and the people who have brought us to this point today. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. I remember this is from a family member that had gone through it, walk in to see them and it's like they've been in the hospital at this point for like a, a good maybe two and a half months, very desperate, like you know, things are not looking really, really good. And he's just joking around about some stuff. And then the doctor is supposed to come in and talk to him. And the doctor walked in and he just like opened up all the windows, made it so bright. And he goes, let's go for a walk. And it was just like, what's going on? He's like, the first thing he said to him is like, cancer is a mindset. You can adopt our mindset and die, or you can adopt the other mindset and live. So let's go live. And he just went for a walk. And I was like, it this like, it, it literally, just made the hair stand back yeah. in my, my head here. The last one we want to talk about is the, the event that's happening in March. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, Laugh for the Cure is an event that is built off the framework of Fight for the Cure. So we have six people who are business leaders or community leaders, and they come in and they work with six professional local comedians, and they develop a five-minute comedy set, and they perform that on the oh, wow. the event. Yeah, so some people like off people often ask me, would you rather like be in fight for the cure or laugh for the cure? And I was like, I would rather organize both. Thank you, <laughs> because that is not for me. But, I, I don't know about laugh, but yeah, I, I could probably do the fight, but I'm, I'm just not sure. Note to self: <laughs> You're on my list for next year then for tryouts. <laughs> um, but yeah, laugh for the cure is a really great event, and it really is inspired by us all you know, taking that moment to appreciate the opportunity to have a laugh, you know, that famous quote of laughter is the best medicine, you know, and really taking that time to be together in community. And it is, you know. it is like, I feel sometimes like, you know, that as hard as things can be, a little bit of laugh can bring it a long, long way. And then it takes you out of that misery that you're in. Yeah. Even if it's five minutes. It's distracting. It's, right? it's good for your heart. It's good for Oops. heart health. It's good for the mental state that you're in. You know, it just takes you out. Uh, it's a good way to just be living in the moment, yeah. which a lot of us don't do. We're always worried about what's next, what's next, what's next. We forget about what's coming. Yeah. Uh, or we're so blinded by what's coming that we don't really hold on to what we have yeah. in the moment. Did they say it takes... More, it you get more wrinkles from frowning than you do from smiling. So I'm gonna hold on to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, the wrinkles are different. Like when you're smiling, the wrinkles are here. When you're frowning, exactly. the wrinkles are here. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah. So for laugh for the cure, six comedians. Anybody that we know that's famous, are you actually allowed so, to share any of that information? So the six local comedians, some of them uh, work at Absolute Comedy, some of them work at Yuck Yuck, some of them have done international tours. Yeah, so we'll be lining up and defining who exactly those six pros are this year. So we'll call them the pros and the Joes. Um, and the Joes will be starting a promotion for auditions in September and then connecting with people who want to get involved. I have a list of people who are interested, but we want to sort of give the broad opportunity for people to you know, to come and audition and let us know who they are and yeah. why they should be up there on that stage. I don't know. I don't have a single funny bone in my body, so uh -huh. it wouldn't be me. I don't believe you. Our headliner this year is Julie Kim, so we're really excited about that. We're excited to have a female com a headliner this year. Nice. And, uh, yeah, yeah, she's quite funny and pretty well-known in internationally and very well known in Canada. Amazing. And then she's a, obviously she's a comedian. She's yes. She's like an average Joe. Yeah. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Okay. The, um, so what I'd like to kind of just let people know a little bit more about how to go about getting involved. 
it doesn't matter which event, it doesn't matter which sort of community, a little bit more about how can they get in touch with you guys, how they can get involved, what are some of the things to look out for, that kind of stuff, if that's okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, really to get involved with us, the best thing to do is go to our website and go to our staff page and find who they are that you know that would they would connect with. So for anything events related, they would get in touch with me. And um, anything related to our in fund, they would get in, in touch with that person. And, you know, our philanthropy team is really open to talking to anybody about whatever it is they need. Our VP of philanthropy or our director of philanthropy. Yeah, you can reach out to any of us at the Cancer Foundation. You can find our information, our email um, on our website. Yeah. Fantastic. And just the, in regards to the sponsorship and things like that, what are some of the most interesting sponsorships you've had? Oh, hmm. I would say probably the Fight for the Cure sponsorships because uh, we have our headline sponsorship, but then we have sponsors who sponsor each bout, right? So that's kind of an exciting way for people to get involved and in knowing that, you know, when when they're in the ring and they're about to announce that fight, that that company's name is going to be announced and in support of that bout to a thousand people. You know, and that we highlight those sponsors on our on our social media as mm -hmm. well. What are some of the uh, advantages to being a sponsor? Yeah, so I, again, just that real awareness to the people that are in the room. But there's like a a long, extensive social media lead up campaign that happens that the sponsors are included in. So you know, for every piece of material that goes out, or you know, every social media post. Heart and Crown as the presenting sponsor for Fight for the Cure, for example, is on every post that we create. You know, our Charles logo. going to get a free shout out on this one as well, too. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, so it's really like, you know, for folks that are out there that are looking at with their company, they're looking at a couple of things. One, it's definitely a tax write off for you as an organization if you're going to sponsor. A sponsor does not get a tax receipt. Not a tax receipt. No, okay. no. So donors do, for sure. So anybody but who buys, a table or a ticket to our events, there's, you know, part of that ticket purchase is a tax receipt, um, but sponsors don't. So the difference there, according to CRA, because we're very careful to follow the rules, um, a sponsor gets all that recognition. So somebody who donates, they get a tax receipt, but there's no public recognition. Makes so sense. So it's really... Recognize them. Yeah. Otherwise... Think of it as maybe like an adver advertising it is. expense in a way. It's an opportunity to so it's, it's definitely, a, you know, still a write-off in a way, but it's yeah. just a, in a different type of bracket. You're not necessarily taking it as a donation. Right. Uh, it's more of a business expense. If yes, you will. it is. Yeah. Uh, so a way to just free content. Right, right. And a lot of those companies out there really do have a budget for, you know, sponsorship to charities and things like that. Right. So, you know, we're, we're happy to work with them to see where it fits in their budget, what makes sense. and. You know, we certainly don't want to pitch somebody on a $25,000 sponsorship if all they really have to offer is 10000 or 5000 okay. You know, we want to work with people and companies where they're at. I'll make sure my accountant is not watching because they're like, no, no, that's the wrong <laughs> bracket. Don't put it in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, really appreciate it. And Trisha, thank you so much for being on the, on the show. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's definitely an opportunity for me to you know, again, absorb all of that information. I, I've definitely used your foundation, family members at your foundation. I know a lot of people in the city uh, that I know of that have used that foundation. And then we're hoping for many years to come that you guys are there to support everyone out there, whether it's a family member or a patient or a mix of both. And, and the work that you do is, has been phenomenal in the city. I wish you nothing but the best and hopefully that this continues. And you find the sponsors that you need and, and definitely be able to uh, put on a great show. I know the last year was fantastic. Fight for the Cure. I'm really excited for this year as well. Right. And in fact, I'm probably more excited for the gala and not, not that I'm not excited about the fight. I know that, you know, I have a, a couple of bets there that I want to, want to cash out on, but uh, <laughs> definitely for, for the gala and the laughs at the end of the day, like you, you know, nothing better than a, than a good laugh and, right. and a good night out with with a partner or what have you to just, you know, enjoy life and then really showcase that at the end of the day, we only live once, might as well enjoy it and then truly just be able to support the cause that we have here for everyone out there, uh, you know, fight the good fight and uh, definitely make sure that, you know, bring your support and show 
showcase what you can uh, to help them out as well. So Trisha, thank you. Thanks for the uh, Ottawa Council Foundation for being a guest on our show. And uh, for folks that are watching, if you like what you see, please do not forget to hit the like button. Uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that way you can get more and more alerts about episodes that come out and you'll be a little bit more in the know about all of the great businesses and the organizations that we uh, bring on the show to shed some light on this fantastic city that we live in. And Trisha, thanks again. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Yeah.